You're walking down the beach toward the water, but something feels different today. The water is bright green, and your nose gets filled with a recognizable pungent stench of rotting eggs. Should you probably come closer to check this unusual phenomenon? Mm -mm. Stop right now until it's too late. What you see is called a harmful algal bloom, also called algae bloom, and approaching it is a very bad idea. This bloom contains algae that can produce dangerous toxic gases. That's what makes previously popular touristy places deserted and outright treacherous. You can come to a sea or lake beach and spot something that looks like blue-green foam floating on or just beneath the surface of the water. Or it may resemble streaks of bright green paint. Some blooms, called red tides, can color the water brown or red. Anyway, once you notice something like that, try to stay away, keep in check that curiosity of yours, and don't go exploring. When algae decompose, Pockets of toxic hydrogen sulfide gas are trapped under the crust. If you unknowingly step on such a pocket, you'll set the gas free and can accidentally inhale it. It's enough to say that this is likely to end tragically. On some beaches, bulldozers pile up the algae into dump trucks and bring it to special centers. There, workers dry the seaweed and get rid of it. But sometimes, these centers have to be temporarily closed. Algae mixed with sand and mud smell so awful that local people can't sleep at night because of the stench. There are three types of dangerous algae that can gather into harmful algal blooms – cyanobacteria, dinoflagellates, and diatoms. All of them are made up of minuscule floating life forms that use sunlight to create their own food. The blue-green algal blooms are caused by cyanobacteria. They produce dangerous toxins that destroy nerve tissue. It can get so bad that water treatment plants might be unable to get rid of the toxin. Then, local people are recommended not to use tap water. Dinoflagellates and one diatom species are responsible for creating red tides. They occur mostly in ocean bays. For a red algal bloom to form, the water has to be warm, salty, and rich in nutrients. Such blooms release a huge amount of different toxins. In Texas, red tides used to happen once in a decade. Now they occur every three years. In Florida, red algal blooms appear every year. Long, skinny diatoms can also produce toxic substances harmful to people. Even worse, if some shellfish, like razor clams, eat a lot of this plankton, they become toxic too. That's why cooking them for dinner can lead to a disaster. It's one of the reasons why marine waters are usually monitored. If toxin levels become too high, beaches get closed for shellfish harvesting. Harmful algal blooms can last for several days to a couple of months. They rid the water of oxygen, causing marine life to disappear. But it gets even worse when microbes start to decompose the algae at the end of the bloom. They consume even more oxygen in the process, and no fish can survive it. This creates huge areas of water almost totally devoid of oxygen and any kind of plant or animal life. Harmful algal blooms appear in the regions with too many nutrients in the water. And the most common of these nutrients comes from agriculture and other industries. Plus, winter monsoons have become warmer and now carry more moisture. This allows algae to gather in huge blooms. Some of them get so gigantic that the thick green swirls can be seen from space. Not all algal blooms are harmful, though. Some of them just add a terrible taste to the water, change its color, or produce revolting smells. Unfortunately, you won't be able to tell toxic algae from totally harmless kinds, judging only by their appearance. Algae aren't the only organisms that look deceitfully harmless. Here are other marine inhabitants you should never ever touch. The Arukanji jellyfish, found in Australia, looks tiny and totally innocent. But appearances are deceitful, and this baby, the size of a human thumbnail, is actually lethal. During stinger season, which lasts from November to May, tons of beaches get closed because of these itsy-bitsy creatures. What makes the jellyfish particularly dangerous is their miniature size. You will simply fail to notice one while swimming. Oops. The blue-ringed octopus looks not just harmless, it's breathtakingly beautiful. But don't let the looks fool you. You wouldn't want to disturb this relatively small 8-inch long creature. It carries enough venom to bring down 26 adults within mere minutes. And once the animal feels threatened, well, you can probably guess the outcome. At the same time, when left alone, 
the octopus is absolutely docile. The infamous box jellyfish, named for its cubic body shape, lives in the Indian and Pacific Oceans. Stay clear from a creature with a squarish bell and long, dangling tentacles. And even if you see only a single tentacle, without the jellyfish attached to it, don't come close or touch it. The box jellyfish can grow up to 10 feet, and each of its tentacles has about 500,000 microscopic harpoons to inject venom. Unlike other jellyfish, box jellyfish are hunters. They can latch onto you by wrapping their slender tentacles around your limb or body. With how dangerous their venom is, it won't be a pleasant experience. The crown of thorns starfish got its name because of the venomous spines covering its entire body. The second largest starfish in the world, it can grow up to 20 inches across. They feed on corals, and they eat a lot. Just one hungry starfish can finish off more than 100 square feet of corals within a year. The creatures also tend to have loads of babies. They produce more than 500 million eggs at a time. Really, an overachiever. The fairly small, blue-spotted ribbon-tail ray mostly lives in the tropical Indian and western Pacific Oceans, near coral reefs. No more than 14 inches across, the creature has a striking color pattern. It's yellow, with electric blue spots on its body and several blue stripes on its tail. But however pretty this animal is, keep in mind that it's also dangerous. It can injure you with venomous tail spines. You can come across lionfish in the South Pacific Ocean and in the Caribbean Sea. Despite what most people think, it's okay to cook these fish. These creatures present real danger when they are alive. You can get accidentally stung by their needle-sharp fins that contain venom. If you're an enthusiastic shell collector, you should know the cone snail by sight. About 4 inches long, the snail looks cute and innocent. But this look is deceitful, especially if you're dealing with a tropical species. Imagine finding a pretty shell and picking it up. You aren't afraid. Your diving gloves seem to offer perfect protection. But cone snails have tiny needle-like protrusions they can deploy from their mouths. And those are full of lethal neurotoxins. These harpoons can easily get through your diving suit's fabric. But the worst thing is that the venom contains painkillers. You won't even know you've been stung. The flower urchin got to the Guinness Book of Records as the most dangerous sea urchin on the planet. These creatures live in the Indian and Western Pacific Oceans. And while a flower urchin may look like something you'd love to see in your aquarium, never ever touch it. Flower urchins have enough venom to make your holiday extremely unpleasant. Or short. The reef stonefish, the world's most venomous fish, knows how to camouflage. Oh goody. It can blend into the surroundings so well, you won't even notice it even if you're paying attention. This makes it all too easy to step on the fish. Once the creature feels threatened, like when you're accidentally trying to crush it, it extends the venomous spines growing along its back. The more pressure, the more venom the fish produces. The creature remains dangerous even taken out of the water. The Indonesian needlefish isn't venomous, doesn't have sharp teeth, and will most likely stay as far away from you as possible. The danger lies in the fish's body shape. After all, it wasn't called the needle for nothing. Needlefish swim near the surface. In case of danger, they launch themselves out of the water, and their speed can reach 37 miles per hour. Their long, sharp jaws turn the fish into flying spears. The striped surgeon fish got its name because of the spines growing near the base of its tail. When the fish feels in danger, it moves the tail and reveals these scalpel-shaped spines. If you don't hurry to move away, you can get several nasty cuts. Keep in mind that some species are also venomous. Hey, have a nice day at the beach, y'all! Boom! This word isn't nearly enough to illustrate the explosion, the most powerful one you've ever seen. And what's most important, it's a lake that's just blown up. Hey, all you wanted to do is light up some fireworks in this picturesque place. But you must have totally missed the danger strictly no fire warning sign along the way. And now, the wall of fuming water is quickly closing in on you. But first, let's rewind to the beginning of the whole thing. You're in Alberta, Canada, and have just arrived to Abraham Lake for a hike of your life. The lake is frozen, and the view is awesome. Those bubbles under the ice look like hundreds of frozen jellyfish. In reality, 
They're made of methane, a toxic and highly flammable gas produced by bacteria living on the bottom of the lake. That's why the sign is there. If you so much as light a match on this ice, it might set the whole thing on fire. Luckily, you've taken note of it on the way here and put away the fireworks you wanted to light up. Another place, another time. Another lake. This one's not frozen. In fact, it probably hasn't seen a winter since the last ice age. We're in Cameroon now, and the place is called Lake Nios. It looks peaceful, but make no mistake, its orange-brown waters hide a deadly secret. The lake rests atop a highly volatile area, and the fissures in its bottom let out massive amounts of carbon dioxide. When the ground shifts, this gas spills out of the lake and flows miles around it. The concentrations are so high that one breath of it would make you faint and you'd have zero chance of waking up. Eh, you get the picture. But the most sinister thing about it is that the CO2 doesn't have a smell or color. So you wouldn't even see it coming. Local authorities have set up a system of pipes that drains the gas from the lake, making it mm, relatively safe for people and animals in the vicinity. And another toxic lake, Kivu, on the border of Congo and Rwanda, has even been made to provide energy for millions of people thanks to its gases. While we're in Africa, the Danakil Depression in Ethiopia is also worth a blood-curdling visit. Dubbed the hottest place on Earth, it sure lives up to its name. The ravine is peppered with extremely hot springs, toxic acid ponds, and active volcanoes. The landscape is surreal, to say the least, and is probably the only inhabited place on Earth where no life can exist. The Afar people live here all year round and gather salt around the springs for trade, while scientists couldn't find any evidence of microbial life in those. Humans are notorious for settling in places most would gladly avoid. Take Mount Tambora in Indonesia. Thousands of people have been living on and around its slopes for centuries until the fateful day in 1815. Tambora is a volcano. And that year, it decided to erupt, resulting in a blast that obliterated everything on the island and was heard almost a thousand miles away. It spewed out so much volcanic ash that it fell in sheets on the surrounding isles and caused a year without a summer in the whole northern hemisphere. It was the most powerful eruption in the last 10,000 years, and Mount Tambora became as much as 5,000 feet lower after it. But back to our time. There's an island you won't be allowed to visit, but I bet you wouldn't want to anyway. The Snake Island in Brazil is home to thousands of snakes, as its name implies. The moment you step on its soil, you're in grave danger of being bitten by a viper. The island is also the only place you can meet a golden lancehead viper. The encounter of a lifetime, literally. This place is so dangerous that Brazil has banned tourists and any other visitors from it unconditionally. Okay, gotta go. Now, get your warmest clothes on and don't forget a fur face mask. We're going to Omayak in Russia. It's a small town in the far north that's often called the coldest place on the planet where people still live. The only place with a lower average temperature is Antarctica, and that's saying something. In the winter, if you so much as forget to put on a sweater, another sweater, another sweater, and a fur coat, you'll get frozen to the bone in mere seconds. Temperatures here drop to the chilling minus 96 degrees Fahrenheit. Fresh fruit turns to chunks of ice in minutes and becomes so hard you could drive nails into wood with an apple here. Now, before you freeze in place, let's go somewhere no boat will take you. The skeleton coast in Namibia. No, really, you can only drive or fly in here because boats and ships won't go near the place. The waters are treacherous, sudden gales toss vessels around, and sharp rocks hiding underwater are all too happy to ram into their hulls. The coast itself stretches for hundreds of miles and is divided into southern and northern parts. Visitors on all-terrain vehicles are allowed freely into the southern part, but only about 800 people a year can get to the northern one and only with guided tours. People are known to have been lost in this desert forever, and it's a daunting place to go. It got its name from numerous animal carcasses found here. Hmm. Still, about 50,000 indigenous people managed to survive in this place along with adapted animals – lizards, hyenas, and even elephants. 
Now, you'd expect a living destruction machine anywhere but the heart of Europe. Naples, one of the most famous cities in Italy, is built on top of an active supervolcano. In 2018, scientists noticed this monster of a mountain was building up magma in its depths. They say it isn't likely to erupt in the near future, but there's a smaller yet no less dangerous volcano just a few miles off – the infamous Vesuvius. You might remember it for the immolation of the Roman city of Pompeii about 2,000 years ago. You might, but I wasn't around then. This one has been active for a long while, and both citizens and guests of Naples put their lives at stake every single day they spend in town. But hey, while you're there, try the pizza! Northeast of France is also an unwelcoming place. A chain of areas has been dubbed Zone Rouge, or Red Zone, and declared off-limits since the 1920s. If, by some wild chance, you find yourself in one of these places, you'll only see wilted plants and scorched earth, so much in contrast with the lush landscapes of the rest of the country. The soil and air is so polluted here that people are prohibited to enter for fear of choking. And in any case, nothing can live in the red zone at the time. There's an inhabited island in Japan that was once closed for air travel for 8 years. Miyakijama is basically a volcano on whose slopes people live. It has been erupting roughly every 20 years, and the latest eruption was in 2000. The volcano doesn't normally spill lava, but instead it throws out enormous clouds of toxic sulfuric gases. Hey, don't forget your mask! Speaking of which, at the peak of its activity, residents of the island had to wear gas masks at all times, and even years after the eruption, they took those masks with them just in case. Hey, I can relate! Not far from where we've just been, in Kamchatka region of Russia, there's an incredibly beautiful valley in which you don't want to stay for too long. It's ominously called the Valley of Death, and it sits at the base of another active volcano. When the mountain lets out its fumes – spoiler, quite often – the toxic gases, heavier than air, go down its slopes and right into the valley. Small critters have no chance of survival breathing this stuff, and even larger animals and humans will have trouble getting out unscathed. Another deadly vacation destination is Saltströmmen Strait in Norway. It looks serene and beautiful, and you can almost feel it inviting you to take a dip and bathe in its waters. Mm, don't do that, though. Every six hours, the calm strait turns into a roaring mass dotted with huge and powerful whirlpools. It's all because of a tidal current between two fjords the strait is connecting. Here, on a high tide, the rush of water is too massive for the narrow stream, making it a deadly trap for both swimmers and boats. Now, over in Bolivia, there's a 45 miles long road that only the bravest dare to traverse. Youngest Road goes along the side of a mountain range and is a major attraction for cyclists craving for a thrill. A new passage has been built that bypasses the most dangerous parts of the route, but the original road was very narrow, with the abyss and no guardrails to speak of on one side and a steep slope on the other. Frequent landslides, fog, and rains made cycling here extremely dangerous and unpredictable, which, of course, never stopped adrenaline seekers from all over the world to come here for a bike ride like no other. Finally, if you like hot springs, you might also love a visit to Boiling Lake in Dominica. Located in a national park, it's a cavity filled with constantly boiling water from the rivers in the vicinity. It's kept hot by the extremely hot springs of toxic gas, and the fumes above the surface are also toxic. The lake attracts tourists, but getting too close to it might prove really dangerous. It's known to burst, flooding the surrounding area with clouds of gas. Now, if you step on a sea urchin, you're gonna know right away. <laughs> Look at those spikes. Get the point? <laughs> Ow! While they're not aggressive, they've got a great defense going against any creatures that want to eat them. Venomous spikes and a poisonous bite. Eh, pick your poison, literally. They live in all of the oceans of the world, so avoiding them is out of the question. They mostly hang out in shallow water, hiding in rock pools and reefs, so unmindful people step on them a lot. 
The long, venomous spikes of the urchin look like needles. Feel like them, too. They can go in quite deep, plus they release a strong toxin. The cure? Remove the spikes quickly and wash with salt water. One small marine mammal just loves sea urchins. Any guesses? It's the sea otter. Don't let its cuteness get in the way of its toughness. Mm. These mammals rarely leave the water, and that even includes taking naps. Holding hands with other otters keeps them from floating away from the pack. Their fur is the densest on the planet, up to a million hairs per square inch. Hey, we humans only have about 2,000. They're also good with tools. They can use rocks to hammer open shells. Hey, how else would you open a sea urchin? You ought to try it sometime. (laughs) Stonefish aren't going to win any beauty contest unless the pageant is for best rock look-alike. Their tiny, unreflective eyes and rough skin blend in perfectly with their environment. A large head, an even bigger mouth, and a home full of… yeah, it's rocks. And just because you're on the beach doesn't mean you're safe. Stonefish can survive for 24 hours out of the water. Stepping on one or even handling one won't be that fun. Their dorsal fin spines have extremely strong venom. It shoots out when they get stepped on, and it can lead to paralysis or even heart failure. You'll need help fast. No wonder they're one of the most dangerous creatures in the water or anywhere. Be careful when scrambling around rocky areas. They love to play hide and seek. Box jellyfish tentacles grow up to 10 feet long, and each tentacle has 5,000 stinging cells. Not bad for a creature that's mostly just water. Their venom is strong enough to paralyze anything they want to eat. Now, if you happen to get stung, it's going to hurt. A lot! Its toxins contain proteins that affect the heart, skin cells, and even our nervous system. No wonder it's considered one of the most dangerous creatures on the planet. I wouldn't recommend using sunscreen, soda, coffee, or other older methods. They don't work. Your best bet is some good old-fashioned seawater. Looks like jellyfish are the rulers of the ocean, not sharks. Hey, look around your local rock pool. You might see this sweet little octopus. It's tiny and has blue rings. Cute! But don't fall for it now. This octopus wouldn't make a good pet. When provoked, the octopus will start flashing neon blue to warn everyone to stay away. And I highly recommend you do just that. Their venom is a thousand times more dangerous than cyanide. There's also no known antidote for it. The best thing to do? Take a quick picture and walk away. Better yet, just walk away. Now, not even the octopuses are normal down under. I'll stick with my shrimp on the bar if you may. Do you see that large log near the ocean floor? Maybe it's part of an old ship, a treasure, gold, diamonds. Hey, I'm rich! As you get closer, you notice something. It's swimming! It's not a shark or a dolphin. It's a saltwater crocodile. Now, don't panic. If you bump into one of these reptiles in the sea, it's unlikely it'll think of you as food. Crocodiles have a special valve in their throat that stops them from drowning underwater, but that doesn't mean they can't bite. Usually, they're heading to a nearby island, and the quickest way there is to body surf. They can't really take the ferry. Watching one from a distance should be okay, just don't swim to shore right away. They love to ambush their lunch in the shallow water. If there's one time I'd like to see a great white shark, it's when I'm diving with crocodiles. They'll gladly take a crocodile-sized nibble, given the right motivation. Going out on a boat off the coast of Mexico sounds like the perfect vacation. The sun, the blue water, the most endangered sea creature… Wait, what? The vaquita isn't dangerous, but don't expect it to stick around to say hello or sign any autographs. It's incredibly shy. This little cow, that's what the Spanish means, is one tiny sea mammal. With those black markings around its eyes, it looks more like a sea panda to me. Seeing one should make you feel very special. They're on the brink of extinction, mostly because they get caught up by accident in fishing nets. It's estimated that there are only 10 left in the wild. The Galapagos Islands are legendary. Giant tortoises, blue-footed bobbies, Sally Lightfoot crabs, and red-lipped batfish. But if you've ever swum around there, you might have seen something really unexpected in the water. Iguanas! 
everywhere! These large marine reptiles eat the algae that grow on underwater rocks. They're strictly vegetarians. Yeah, I'll bet the fish are happy about that. A long, flat tail designed for swimming helps them move around, and sharp claws keep them on the rocks for their daily sunbathing sessions. But watch them closely. They sneeze a lot. They haven't got a cold or anything. They're sneezing out salt. A special gland keeps the salt out of their nose, and they've got to get rid of it somehow. Ooh, sounds painful. What's cool is that they don't mind us in the water with them. Because the islands have been so isolated, the creatures here aren't afraid of humans. Now, if picking up shells on the beach is something you like doing, make sure the shell you collect doesn't already have an owner. Snails are everywhere in this world, and they're mostly harmless to the touch. But there's always one, ruining it for everybody. Trust me, the cone snail is nothing like its land-based brothers. It's not vegetarian. There are over 500 species of this venomous sea creature, with a few that can really hurt you. These little snails are extremely vicious. They inject their venom through a harpoon-like tooth. And they don't even floss. They're capable of paralysis, blindness, lung failure, and even worse. Best give some respect to your backyard snails. You don't want them calling this thing in as a backup. Want to high-five a sea creature? Well, put your flipper, I mean hand, up for the Tasmanian red handfish. This fish doesn't swim like a fish. It walks. It uses its flipper-like hands to stroll around on the ocean floor. These bottom walkers are disturbed by swimmers and boats a lot. Some people even want to take them home as pets. I think it's better to just give them a wave and swim on by. If you think starfish love getting their photo taken, does that mean you can communicate with starfish? If you could, this one would ask you to leave it alone. It's always grumpy. Unlike its washed-up relatives on the seashore, the crown of thorn starfish is large and dangerous. These creatures occur naturally on coral, like the Great Barrier Reef. Their venom's terrifying, even for humans. This sea creature is covered in poisonous spines that cause intense and immediate pain. It can last longer than three hours. So what happens if you rub one of these things the wrong way? Nausea and vomiting. Not exactly ideal for getting that perfect Instagram pic. Pufferfish may look small and cute, but handle them wrong and it's game over. They're a huge hit at underwater birthday parties the world over. They can turn themselves into balloons. Funnily enough, not all pufferfish are venomous with sharp spikes. Some are smooth and adorable. But the nasty ones have a highly toxic substance inside their body. Which is weird, because you could pay up to 50 bucks for it at a restaurant. You ever heard of the Japanese delicacy fugu? It's venomous pufferfish on a plate. Young chefs spend years training to prepare it. But one wrong cut, and you can bet that customer won't be coming back ever. Sharks are the only animal immune to pufferfish toxin. Great, another thing that makes sharks awesome.